Corporal Nix Talverin ducked behind a crumbling barricade as plasma fire scorched the air above him, the stench of ozone and burnt chitin filling his nostrils. Another salvo ripped through the hazy smoke, shredding the ferrocrete at his back. Globs of molten debris pelted his armor. Rain's really coming down today, Kaz grunted over the comlink, his voice a low rumble. The grizzled sergeant crouched a few meters away, the heavy rotary cannon in his augmented grip spitting crimson fury at the unrelenting tide of alien horrors. Talverin risked a glance over the barricade's jagged lip. Waves of insectoid drones surged across the churned killing field, their glistening carapaces knitting together in an ever-evolving phalanx. Larger creatures Praetorians and their ilk strode among the swarms, blasting indiscriminately with organic plasma cannons fused to their armored forearms. The colony capital's once majestic skyline had been reduced to a smoldering graveyard. Blackened husks of skyscrapers jutted from banks of ash like broken bones. Horde spores rained from the slate skies, taking root wherever they fell. This was Arcturus in its death throes. We're staining these trenches red, Corp. Vasca's wild-eyed face appeared beside him, her pink hair glowing faintly from muzzle flashes. She slapped a new clip into her rifle and swung back into the melee without waiting for a response. Talverin tightened his grip on the plasma cannon's hot barrel, the weapon's power core thrumming. Around the shattered intersection, his squad defended the last fortified position in the capital's ruins, the final bulwark between the Horde and the spaceport's civilian shelters. It wouldn't be enough. The rock cybernetic eye zoomed in on a fresh horror emerging through the caustic fog. A massive insectoid juggernaut its curved armor scored with colony artillery fire and fanged maw consuming rubble and corpses alike. Two pairs of rending claws extended from its segmented torso, each one capable of bisecting a tank. This Praetorian would cut them to pieces. New contact, Vasca shouted. Big FKR at two o'clock. Kaz whirled toward the target, his armor's smart link highlighting its weak points. Copy that, firing for effect. The rotary cannon roared a blistering fusillade of armor piercing depleted uranium slugs sparking from the Praetorian's impossibly thick hide. A squadron of Nat drones joined the barrage, streams of plasma raking across its armored carapace. The Xeno juggernaut didn't so much as slow its inexorable advance. Focus your fire, damn it. We have to. Talverin's order was cut off by an overhead shriek. A knot of leathery wings and talons dropped from the clouds, descending on the beleaguered squad. Flyers. Flyers on our six. Talverin spun and triggered his cannon, the high energy burst slicing through two of the airborne creatures in a spray of incandescent ichor. The rest slammed into their lines in a frenzy of gnashing fangs and hooked claws. He glimpsed Edraz stagger backward in a crimson haze, one of the leathery horrors latched onto his face. The young private thrashed and clawed at the parasite clamped around his skull with sickening desperation. Vasca was there in a heartbeat the fighting knife in her hand flashing with cold precision. She buried it into the parasite's soft underbelly again and again, until its frenzied spasms ceased and the corpse sloughed off Edraz's mangled features. Gotta get Tia, Doc. The private wheezed through shattered teeth, blinded by his own blood. He slumped forward into Vasca's arms. Talverin swallowed a surge of anger. There would be time for rage later if any of them survived the horde's relentless onslaught. He focused on the immediate priority, clearing a path to safety. Fall back to the rally point. The rock's order cut through the cacophony, drilled into his soldiers like a mantra. Dirai Jenkshin, lay down cover fire. We need to regroup at the... A bone-shaking tremor rippled beneath their feet, cutting Talverin off. Plumes of ash and debris billowed from a cluster of fresh rents torn through the ferrocrete. The concrete ruptured again as a dozen segmented limbs burst through stabbing toward the sky in a grotesque mockery of plant life. More horde biostructures gestating beneath the colony's surface. What in the blazing hells? Kaz panned his gun toward the horror, spraying heavy slugs into the encroaching tendrils. They sheared through the alien constructs with sickening ease, severed sections thrashing in virulent heaps. But for each dismembered tendril, three more lashed free, unfurling razor-edged stingers from their blunt tips. They whipped toward the squad in a frenzy, driven by some singular malign intelligence. Diraj was impaled through his torso and flung aside like a rag doll. His death cry drowned amidst the shrieking tumult. The tendrils lashed toward Talverin in a blinding arc. He ignited his cannon in a desperate attempt to shear through them. 
searing plasma vaporizing several attacking limbs in rapid succession. But another lash found its mark, the razor edge slicing a molten trench across his faceplate. Talvarin reeled as his HUD flickered and died, the cannon slipping from his grip. He staggered backward, slamming hard into the broken permacrete. His head swam, the acrid taste of his own blood flooding his mouth. Through the haze, he saw the Praetorian bearing down on them with terrifying speed, a blackened juggernaut amid the pandemonium. Its claws cleaved through drifting smoke, remorseless and unstoppable. Their last stand was over before it had truly begun. Talvarin tried to rise, to rally his soldiers one final time, but his body refused to obey. Muted explosions echoed across the intersection as the towering horror swept them aside. He'd failed them all. The Praetorian loomed over the rock, two smoldering barrels protruding from its maw. A single, pitiless cluster of eyes studied him with emotionless disdain. This was to be his final battle butchered like game on the warped killing fields of Arcturus, another life spent defending humanity's inexorable retreat. The notion should have filled him with regret or dread, but all Talvarin felt was resignation. His finger found the detonator stud on his chest plate. If he was fated to die here, he would take as many of these abominations with him as he could. The Praetorian raised its claw, silhouetted against the dying sun. In that moment, an icy rictus split its carapace, segments peeling apart in an unfolding obscenity. Spindly, stalk-like appendages lanced free, terminating in sharpened bone lances that glinted wetly in the fading light. The horde was nothing if not endlessly adaptive. As the first of the lances arced down toward his skull, a scrambled Vox transmission crackled through Talvarin's shattered helmet speaker. Deer's final defensive retreat is Isaiah get those civvies loaded or so help me. The gruff voice dissolved into static-laced shrieks. Civilian transports. The colony's evacuation was already underway. A profound sense of failure washed over Talvarin as the bone lances found their mark. Nix Talvarin's reality fragmented into splinters of pain and code. His augmented nerves screamed in binary agony as the bone lances punched through armor and flesh alike. Crimson warning runes flickered across his retinal display, his cybernetic life support systems struggling to prioritize the cascading trauma. But it was the sound, more than anything, that wormed through the delirium. A thin, keening wail that transcended the din of battle, the terrified cries of children trapped in this unfolding apocalypse. The transmission that had crackled through moments earlier bloomed into horrific clarity, a desperate chorus of pleas for salvation amid the roar of evacuation alarms. Please, O oh God, anyone, the transports are leaving without us. My babies, they won't take my babies. This is Senior Evacuation Marshal Isaiah Brooks. All shelters are go for immediate evacuation. Anyone unable to reach the mustering zones will be left behind. Repeat, anyone. The voices warped and layered over one another in a nightmarish fugue, punctuated by the shriek of multi-ton bulkheads slamming shut. Somewhere in the distance, a civilian transport's engines roared to life. No, 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 wait. We're coming, just wait. A mother's panicked shrieks cut through the cacophony. Jamal, Mariah, stay with mommy. We're almost... Her voice was abruptly swallowed by the concussive thunder of the transport's departure abandoning them all to the ravening horde. Rage tore through Talvarin with a searing intensity that burned hotter than any weapon's blast. He was the last of the colony's defenders its final, feudal bulwark, and they were leaving innocents to be butchered while he could still draw breath. Over his dead body, with a feral roar, the rock triggered his suit's overcharge sequence, metabolic regulators flushing his veins with a hyper-oxygenated adrenostim cocktail. His battered body shed its lethargy like a shroud, cybergmented nerves blazing with renewed intensity. Talvarin erupted into motion, ceramoplast armor plates shrugging off the Praetorian's lancing claws. He slammed his shoulder into the towering horror and drove it back in a spray of acidic ichor. Its front limbs scythed at him, serrated blades sparking from his torso in a blossom of tortured armor. But the rock didn't so much as flinch. Survival protocols and tactical augmentations flooded his consciousness with enhanced data streams, his compromised systems rerouting to maintain peak lethality. He barged into its armored torso, cracking chitin, and seized the still smoldering barrels of its plasma cannon. The weapon discharged at point-blank range with a deafening shockwave, engulfing Talvarin in searing energized particles. The horde juggernaut's serrated limbs pulverized his chestplate in retaliation. 
His heads-up display imploded into static amid cascading systems' failures. Through the charred ruin of his helmet, Talvarin could see bone spurs penetrating the gaps in his armor. A lesser warrior would have died a thousand times over. But neither molten shrapnel nor negative mass trauma could deter the rock's fury. He wrenched the plasma cannon free in a spray of oily ichor and slammed the searing barrel into the Praetorian's ruin of a maw again and again, beating the Xeno's horror into full retreat. Horde reinforcements surged around them, but Talvaron was a whirling tempest of violence. His gauntlets discharged with thunder-crack detonations, vaporizing targets with each bone-shattering impact. An incandescent blur of plasma rained from overhead as Kaz directed the remnants of their fire support. More horde biostructures erupted through fresh fissures, impaling and dismembering anything in their path. But the sergeant's withering barrage maintained an ever-shifting safe zone around the melee. Rock, Kaz's voice scraped over the calm in a torrent of static. Citrep Rock, can you get to the civvy shelters? Talvarin shook his head to clear the buffering lag, autosenses struggling to recompile the visual data stream. Somewhere in the distance, a lone transport rumbled skyward, its hull pocked by glancing impacts. Its failing ion trail limbed the hellish horizon like a dying ember, but there were still more on the ground. Still time to buy them precious minutes to escape this charnel house. He spat a mouthful of vitriolic phlegm and triggered his transmitter with a wet cough. Affirmative. Civvies are still boarding. I'll hold this intersection and clear a path to the launch gantries. Copy. Suppressing hostels now. Just say the word if you need to bug out. But there would be no need. Not while there were still innocents to shield. Kaz's answer was lost in the roar of approaching engines, a high, ululating whine unlike anything in the human arsenal. Talvarin's threat assessors peaked as his telemetry pinged a fresh contact punching through the stratosphere. His augmented sight clarified on a blade-shaped craft larger than any human capital ship, venting columns of gas and radiation as it pierced the cloud layer on an oblique vector toward the colony. Its ebony hull bristled with weapon articulations, dozens of separate kill bays arrayed along its endless broadsides. Not colonial reinforcements. No human vessel had ever burned that hot or cruel. The alien dreadnought glided above the embattled spaceport like an indifferent specter of annihilation. Silence fell in its wake, the whine of its engines consuming all other sound, silencing even the horde's nightmarish frenzy. Talvarin opened a wide-frequency hail, his suit recycling power to its calm array. This is Corporal Nix Talvarin, callsign Rock, of the Colonial Peacekeeper Corps. Unidentified craft, you are entering an active combat zone under human jurisdiction. Disengage your attack vector immediately, or you will be regarded as a th The Leviathan's jaw yawned open like a lance between the stars. A spiral of energized fury blossomed outwards, spilling iridescent light across the dying world. Before Talvarin could throw up countermeasures, the beam lashed directly across his position in a blinding sweep of annihilation. His armored chassis was scoured down to its composite skeleton, melting and boiling within the same instant, hurling him backward like a broken doll. Flesh seared from bone, cybernetics and servos flashed into char as he tumbled end over end through the inferno of the beam's aftermath. He came to a stop smoldering amid the fused glass of what had once been the colony's central hab block. Silent screams echoed in his deadened audio arrays as vaporized colonists froze in silica, a snapshot of transcendent suffering. Dark oblivion beckoned with cold finality. Talvarin reached out through the dying static as his neural matrices rapidly burned away. There had to be something more he could do a final act, no matter how insignificant, to defy the pitiless onslaught laying waste to everything around him. His breached helmet filtered the acrid, ozone-tinged air of the beam's wake. Somewhere in that choking miasma, anguished wails floated beneath the crackle of distant plasma fire. The civilians were still out there, waiting for deliverance. Escape pods, then, the last, precious few that would flee this alien dreadnought's purge. If he could just keep them off the colony's surface long enough to reach the outer launch silos. With his failing augmentations slaving every last reserve of power, the rock seized control of an anti-air battery's tracking array. He bestowed one final burst transmission, vocal emitters garbling binary shrieks that coalesced into static choked words. Hold tight, here, comes. The high-altitude interceptor pods streaked skyward in a blinding fusillade, scarring the heavens with ruby contrails.
Their payloads bloomed into searing clouds of shrapnel and plasma, saturation bombing the entire launch gantry in a desperate attempt to sweep it clear of hostiles. An escape shuttle sputtered free from the inferno, its hull half-cracked and trailed by tongues of liquid oxygen. Within the fleet wake, secondary drives flared to life one by agonizing second as it clawed free of the killing field. Talverin felt his motor function cease, his ocular nerves dimming to black as the neural gyros exhausted their final reserves. But that lone shuttle's faltering drive cone illuminated his dwindling sensorium like a star going supernova, outshining his own demise. They would live. That was all that mattered. As the brilliance consumed him, the last flickering thought to cross Talverin's mind was that of his squad mates, his brothers in arms, already gone but not forgotten. He would join them soon. But first, survive. The roar of thrusters washed over Nix Talverin like a tidal wave crashing against jagged shores. He flailed in the lightless void, adrift in a sea of sensory gibberish. Somewhere amidst the babble of system diagnostics and scorched neural pathways, he became aware that he still drew breath. His augmented chassis had rebooted from its decimated combat mode, emergency life support procedures jolting ruined organs back into stuttering spasms. Talverin convulsed amid the twisted wreckage of what had once been an anti-aircraft battery. The launch silos he'd marshaled his final reserves to protect now belched acrid plumes through fresh craters. Beyond the debris field, a handful of escape pods carved fiery arcs through the slate clouds, the last of Arcturus' civilian population fleeing the alien holocaust. His muscles seized as they relearned the cadence of respiration. He retched a mouthful of seared vitrix, sensors finally recalibrating to the ruin around him. The once thriving hab zone had been systematically quarantined, methodically culled by the dreadnought's terrible incendiary beam. Against the ashen skyline, the colossal alien ship hung like a blade suspended above the executioner's block, its obsidian hull impervious to anything the colonists could muster against it. Red runes flickered across Talverin's compromised visor, warning of imminent catastrophic collapse across every system. What was he still doing here? Then the screams pierced the delirium panicked, inhuman wails that transcended the muted clamor of destruction. Not the paralyzing shrieks of vaporized civilians that haunted him before, but something more visceral. Primal. Something was still alive out there. Still suffering. Talverin clawed free of his twisted coffin, bionics shrilling in protest as he lurched through the devastation. Flames licked at the carcasses of civilian extraction craft scattered across the scorched landing fields, their hulls breached and contents strewn about like broken dolls. Evac transports, left behind in the culling, empty but for the haunting echoes of their damned souls. The same voices that had roused him from death's ambivalent repose. A feeble moan pierced through the roar of escaping plasma, a tiny spark of life trapped within the vast charnel house. Talverin pivoted clumsily towards the sound, every servo in his ruined chassis screaming protest. There, beneath the shattered wing of a smoldering shuttle, a familiar splash of pink hair matted with burns and blood. Vasca's sightless eyes stared into the dying embers, her body thrashing with each agonal gasp. Talverin's heart seized in his chest. Had she really survived that onslaught? The fool girl was more tenacious than a Ralvax burrowing in permafrost. Vas, he barked over the din of nearby explosions. Can you hear me? Fall in, we're not done yet. She gave no indication of hearing his order, limbs twitching in discordant spasms. More screams echoed through the soot-choked air around them. They weren't alone. With a grunt of effort, Talverin hoisted what remained of the shuttle's wing and tossed it aside. He made to bend down and retrieve Vasca, half-formed plans to seek shelter filtering through his addled mind. That's when he saw the extent of her wounds. Or rather, what had been inflicted upon her in the midst of Arcturus' fall. The right side of her torso had been caved inwards in a mass of torn synth flesh, a scorched canyon carved through her augmented chassis. The heat bloom had seared away arteries and servos alike, leaving only a hollowed ruin of blackened bones and dangling viscera. And there, nestled within the obliterated ribcage like a vulgar afterbirth, something glistened wetly in the firelight. An ovoid sack of alien placenta flexed obscenely, segmented limbs uncoiling from the steaming biomass. As Talverin looked on in numb horror, a row of semi-translucent fangs erupted from the sack in a gaping maw, gnashing at the surrounding viscera. All around the smoldering graveyard, more and more of the hellish progeny were awakening from their sickly spore wounds. 
They bubbled up from charred impact craters and pooled inside shattered crew compartments, gnashing and slithering as they tasted their first gulps of world-killing radiation. This was how the Horde propagated an insidious, self-perpetuating contagion that insinuated itself into a world's deepest crevices before erupting in apocalyptic rebirth. The vanguard grotesqueries laying waste to Arcturus had merely paved the way for this virulent outbreak. And judging by the plasma-scorched cargo hulk strewn across the landing fields, the invasion force had been abetted by human hands. No. Talverin muttered numbly. The evidence was there, glistening obscenely before his remaining eye. The devastating opening volley had been precise and clinical surgically neutralizing all defenses before culling the surviving population. Vasca's death rattle chopped through his paralysis. Through sightless eyes, she stretched out a hand in a final pleading gesture, unaware her killer's spawn was already birthing from her eviscerated form. As if in a dream, Talvoran raised his armament and engaged the plasma throwers. Searing ion beams spilled forth, cauterizing the pestilent abortions sprouting from her mangled torso, scorching their meaty hides down to the bone. With her final gurgling wheeze, Vasca's limbs ceased their aimless twitching. Perhaps she had found some small measure of peace in the scouring flames. Talverin knew he could grant her no more. Bodies littered the field civilian, soldier all of them bulging with gestating sacks of wriggling offspring. A handful managed to break free in his peripheral vision, malformed atrocities skittering away into the wreckage. There would be no containing this swarm. They'd have to scour the entire colony. Reduce it all to glass before the infection consumed Arcturus utterly. As he swung his cannon towards a fresh cluster of exposed larvae, Talverin froze. A familiar suit signature. Still active amidst the rubble. Could one of his men have somehow survived the culling? Hope blossomed anew despite the charnel reek all around. He pivoted towards the bio sign and advanced through the bone yard, crushing discarded munitions and picking his way across the sprawled dead. Judging by the dispersal pattern, the active suit was encased somewhere beneath an impact crater recently formed, claws etched in the ceramicrete lip. The alien warship then. Someone had managed to launch an interceptor before being swatted down. This is rock. Talverin belted, boosting his transmitter for a stronger lock. Any allied forces on this channel, respond him. A section of the crater wall imploded inwards in a hail of necrotic soil. Serrated limbs uncoiled through the debris, flinging aside sheets of plasteel. A twisted silhouette emerged from the dust cloud, yellow eyes flickering with dim awareness. Talverin felt his finger stiffen on the trigger, scenario projections cascading through his tack net. Horde subterranean breach? No, the wreckage patterns were inconsistent. Something else had burrowed in while he'd been indisposed. And then the anomaly straightened in a popping of dislocated joints, the fading afternoon glint playing across its graven exoskeleton. Identity confirmed, Kaz's guttural voice grated through the calm in a shroud of interference. It's good to see you held it together, Rock. Nick's Talverin's finger tensed on the trigger, combat protocols flooding his consciousness with threat analyzes. But Kaz's ragged form emerged further into the lurid afternoon light, and he forced his plasma cannon to slacken. Was beginning to think I was the only one left, the sergeant rasped, wincing as he peeled away a portion of his warped breastplate. Synth flesh hissed where it had fused to superheated alloys. Thought I'd taken my medicine for sure when that beam hit. Hardly the first time we've beaten the odds, Talverin replied, eyeing the slagged interceptor canopy jutting up behind Kaz. So his old friend had launched countermeasures after all risking the guns of that alien dreadnought to buy time for the final transports. Just like old times. Kaz barked a mirthless chuckle as he followed the rock's gaze. Figured I had a puncher's chance at baiting their flak screen. Should have known those freaks would just skip the foreplay altogether. Acrid smoke wafted from the crater's edge, thick plumes parting to reveal a hellish vista. Tendrils and ossified spines thrashed wildly from countless craters, clear to the horizon. The infestation spores had already taken root across the entire capital zone. There would be no way to contain this outbreak, not with the Xenos remorselessly scouring every last vestige of human civilization. Which raised the question. Citrep, Sergeant, the Rock muttered, already dreading the grim reality they faced. Did any other transports make it off-world? Kaz shook his head somberly, Features twisting with bitter resignation. Today's body count makes Clindathu look like a peace rally. 
That Leviathan babysat the whole damned exodus, picking us off one by one as we punched out. Corporal and sergeant turned in unison at the piercing shriek that split the graveyard stillness. A fresh spore cluster erupted skyward, spraying out fleshy amniotic sacs that burst on impact. Countless chittering organisms spilled forth, slithering between the shadows of their eldritch progenitors. But didn't see any sign of a follow force, Kaz continued, rallying weapon to shoulder. My mark smarts make it a lone vector, so maybe. His syllables trailed off as more of the freshly spawned horde progeny crested over the shattered hull of a downed cargo shuttle. Things with too many limbs and slashing appendages to be natural. Malformed, scrabbling abortions dripping alien viscera from dislocated jaws and oozing membranes. Knee-deep in the unfolding swarm, a twisted figure rose wreathed in virulent ichors. Its movements were jerky, almost painful-looking, as if whatever processes knitted its malign flesh together refused to comply with biological norms. Pale bone spurs jutted from its elongate arms, punching through bulbous knots of chitin and synth musculature. It turned towards them with sudden, mechanical precision. Sunken eye sockets found Talverin across the blasted field between still-burning pyres, fathomless and cruel. Kaz. The name came out half-strangled as Talverin beheld the twisted thing before them. Please tell me I took heavier trauma than I thought. That I'm not actually seeing. No. That's... Kaz's voice faltered, unable to wrap his mind around the grotesque sight. That sick bastard is actually... Hello, Rock. The inhuman baritone lurched across the burning rubble as that thing advanced another step, leaving a viscous trail of offal in its wake. Its movements grew more fluid, animalistic as some deep, atavistic intelligence surfaced behind its ruined eyes. Vaughn. Talverin tensed unable to tear his gaze away as errant snatches of memory clicked into place. Artillery spotter and embedded optics guru their squad's eyes and ears in every engagement, always hanging back behind the line with his optics and sniper spotter rig, keeping overwatch. Christ, you son of a bi, Kaz began snarling, but the twisted horror that had once been Matthew Vaughn lashed out with sudden swiftness. A ribbon of corrosive biomatter unfurled from its wrist like a living harpoon, impaling the air where the sergeant's head had been an instant before. Save the sweet nothings, the aberration grated as Kaz staggered back, weapon raised. You can at least call me by my new designation. It straightened further as more spines and ossified extrusions burst wetly from its warped frame. A trio of additional limbs uncoiled like malign barbed tendrils, whipping back its tattered combat harness to reveal a torso swollen with gestating sacks, the harbinger of your annihilation. With that, its jaws unhinged in a shriek of furious ecstasy, gravid pouch convulsing as it disgorged a living storm of incandescent parasites. The alien progeny swarmed into the world in a blizzard of whipping cilia and flailing stingers, blotting out the wan sun in their sheer malignant multitudes. Vaughn or whatever sentient malice controlled his twisted form threw back its head and crooned a beckoning wail into the swelling tempest. More spores and gestating sacs bubbled to the surface responding to its dread summons. With a violent pulse, the shroud of swarming progeny burst outwards in all directions, spattering the killing field with slime and acidic detritus. Slavering jaws gaped from every shadow as the progeny inched closer, undulant waves of gnashing teeth and twitching articulated limbs. Open fire, Talverin bellowed, steadying his cannon arm as his cognitive matrix tallied the nearest targets. Target the nerve clusters, sunder the limbs, we're going to have to cut our way through. Twin beams of searing plasma lanced out, incinerating the leading monstrosities with surgical precision. Beside him, Kaz opened up with a chattering fusillade, tungsten deflected in sprays of virulent ichor. An armored boot stamped down hard on Vaughn's chest as one of the larger spawns surged towards them. With sharpened bone talons scraping uselessly against ceramoplast plating, Talverin thundered off a point-blank volley, blasting away its gibbering maw. Their movements were a blur of automotion, battlefield analytics heightening reactions beyond natural limitations. But for each abomination they cut down, a dozen more swept in to replace it in a flood of elemental hunger. So this was how it ended. Not out amid the stars in a blaze of righteous fury, but drowned beneath an endless tide of gnashing, abhorrent life. Talverin began to resign himself to oblivion, even as his cannon raked back and forth in a desperate final accounting.
His visor shattered in a spray of scoured polymers as something ripped across his faceplate, narrowly missing his eye. Even as he reared back from the impact, his gauntlet slammed downwards, crushing a knot of pulsing flesh into a spray of misting particulates. As his shattered HUD flickered back online for a few precious nanoseconds, thermal optics rendered the oncoming frenzy in ghostly afterimages. There a gargantuan silhouette hulking just beyond the roiling swarm, dark articulated wings unfurling against the firelit backdrop. A fresh gargantuan horror merged from the charnel chaos, its taloned limbs rending through concrete and armored skeletons alike as it fought its way towards them. The last of the colony's anti-air platforms swiveled with a shriek of torqued servos, bathing the area in searing plasma as Talverin's final gambit initialized. This was it, their end game. All or oblivion. Something within that cyclopean silhouette's photoreceptive corona flared with soulless hunger. Horde progeny swarmed across its armored carapace in a churning carpet that seemed to propel the horror forward through the shredded wreckage. From deeper within the assault craft's breached hull behind him, Talvaran became aware of Kaz stammering into the calm, peppering curses and bravado between each screamed order. Come on, you scraplet bastards. Need some bigger fireworks over here before. The ground trembled as the horde leviathan surged closer, claws churning to sunder anything in its apocalyptic path. Through slitted optics, the rock saw slavering fangs ruptured from its torso in a vertical rictus, regurgitating a fresh tide of ravenous young. There was nowhere left to fall back. Nowhere to retreat but into the finality of whatever darkness awaited. He felt his trigger digit tighten in grim anticipation. But the impact he expected never came. Instead, a shrill whine split the air from high above, swiftly crescendoing to an eardrum-shredding crescendo. Talvarin instinctively threw up an arm as a shockwave of ionizing radiation buffeted him sideways, sensors blanking to white static. He cracked open his remaining eye to see the alien cataclysm held at bay suspended within a perfect sphere of nuclear fire that now split the sky like a miniature sun fallen to earth. Searing radiance bathed the shore-conquered landscape in ominous crimson hues that warped and flickered across his macrobuffered HUD. Within that swirling inferno, the monstrous horror writhed, its outer carapace already sloughing away in cauterized strips. One by one, its wriggling progeny fell to ash amid the incandescent cyclone, any last vestiges of that xenogenic contagion scoured from existence. The resonance frequencies adjusted with a sickening lurch, focusing the thermopocalyptic onslaught into a narrowing beam of purifying oblivion. Whatever remained of Vaughn's twisted hybrid form blossomed into a silhouette beneath the scalar aperture before detonating in a deafening rush of charred butchery. One by one, the swarm surrounding them burst like overripe cysts, searing and boiling within their ionized shells until only glittering clouds of superheated detritus hung in the still night air. As the all-consuming brilliance faded to a guttering afterglow, Talvarin became aware of Kaz's strident tones somewhere off to his left. Colony suppression charges had you in the smelter, freaks. Had to let the big guns do their. The sergeant whirled on him, eyes blazing with exhilaration and no small measure of shock. Rock, what did you? Shrugging off his shattered breastplate, Talvarin gestured at the thermal intensity still rippling across the ruined hab zone. Flattened cyclo-impact craters glowed molten orange in the wake of the colony's last line of defense. Traded the rest of my reserves to hot-start the antimatter catalyzer, he wheezed, the rattle of synthetic augmentations laboring to sustain him. Had to bet everything on those scuttling days. A gravitic shudder rippled outwards as the unstable reaction reached terminal mass, the collapsing singularity emitting agonized screams along the superheat spectrum. Beyond the fading sickle curve of its periphery, shapes began to resolidify amid the scorched rubble. Still solvent human forms rose from hastily thrown trenches, their ceramoplast armor glowing dull cherry. A handful of sooty, half-melted faces peered back at them through shattered blast visors. Survivors part of the last wave of evacuation teams to be caught in the invasion's opening volleys, by the look of things. Tools and supplies still in hand as they mustered in the aftermath, combat engineers and ev marines by their markings. One of the grimy suited figures stumbled forward, plasma cutter dragging across the vitrified earth. Uncle Kaz? A garbled vox crackled. Is that? The other rock's helmets swiveled in tandem at the voice, achromatic scars slowly rotating back towards the colony's last defenders. Talvarin felt the spark within him flicker, sputtering out like a snuffed candle flame. 
but he forced himself to remain standing despite the overwhelming crush of trauma. There were still humans to protect, a legacy to uphold, even if it cost him everything. Not your uncle, and not the only one left, the ruined warrior replied through a mist of vitriolic discharge. But I'll watch your back, one last time. Their deliverance was only beginning.